everyone and welcome back to The Journey. Today, as you can see, we're going to be talking about women's health and particularly trigamonis. Alright, so trigamonis vaginalis is pretty much a flag, flagellate protozoan, which is a parasite pretty much, and it it, it's the common cause of visual transmitted uh, sexual um, infection, okay? And it's also known as trig, alright? So it increased the risk of contracting HIV, which most met, most uh, sexual transmitted infections have the higher risk of now contracting HIV. Okay, also plays a role in developmental of cervical neoplasma, post-operative infections. Right, you have your adverse pregnancy outcomes and PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. If you want more information about pelvic inflammatory disease, I have a video on that. So just click the link and it'll tell you everything you need to know about pelvic inflammatory disease, all right? And infertility. So this is what this uh, uh, parasite can cause, all right? Now, clinical manifestations, which is also known as my signs and symptoms, also known as my nursing assessment, okay? I have my vaginal discharge that can be very thin, sometimes frothy, but for the most part it's thin. It can be yellow to a yellowish greenish, Type of color, it can be very odorous, right? Um, and it can be very irritating. You also can have a vulvitis with a vulva vaginal burning and itching. Okay, and the vulva is just pretty much an area um, of the of the peritoneal area of the of the genital area that is pretty much also known as the vagina itself. So if you see it goes into terms of the vulva and vaginal and things like that, we're talking about the same component area. All right. Um, and that area can also have a lot of burning and itching, okay? So, diagnostic testing. How do you know if someone has trichomonas, right? One of the main things is microscopic detection, right, of the causative organism. So, they'll take the, pretty much the vaginal discharge that the patient is exhibiting, right? And they can microscopically culture it and see exactly what bacteria is in there. And based on that, they'll be able to let you know if this is trichomonas, okay? Also, you have inspection with a speculum, often reveals vaginal and cervical erythema, which is pretty much just redness, with multiple small petechia, which is like strawberry spots or so, all right? So that's another thing that they can do, the speculum, which they also use the speculum when they do the pap smear. So again, there's multiple ways of figuring out exactly what is going on, all right? They also have testing of the trichomonas discharge, demonstrates a pH level that's greater than 4.5. All right, so the vaginal area has a certain pH level that it's supposed to be in. You know, the same way how each and every other part of your body has their own pH level. And with trigomonas, one of the things that they can detect is anything greater than 4.5. So again, trigomonas is just a parasite that is, is there that um, can be caused sexually. So now we're on the medical management. All right, so the most effective treatment is going to be your metro metrodazole, all right, and your tinazole, which is also uh, known as trinidax, trinidamax, which this is the trade name, and these two are the generic names. So as you can see, with the, with the generic, they all end in dissolve, dissolve, okay? So anytime you see the dissolve, just know that these two medications are in the same, same class, okay? Also, you have to treat both partners, okay? So remember, it's a sexually transmitted infection, so if you have it, most likely the patient, the partner that you had sex with also have it as well. So you want to make sure that you are treating both patients and you can have a one-time dose or you can have a week, a week dose, okay? So a one-time dose is going to be your, your, strong, your strong dose and you take that and it's, for most people they are more compliant, of course, because it's just a one-time dose and they're able to, to it's, it's, it's more convenient. Okay, and then with the week-long treatment, it's a smaller dose that they that they take over a, a week span, and with that, it's more effective. But again, you have to think about the type of patient that you are, or uh, the patient that you're dealing with, right? They don't really take their medication. They miss up on their med medication. The one thing you don't want to do is miss up with um, with antibiotics because you don't want them to gain resistance. So you want to make sure that. If the patient is able to comply and they're able to do what it is that they have to do, then they may request for the week-long treatment just because it's more effective. But again, you know, uh, things are more quick and fast and everyone wants everything to be convenient. So most likely you may be looking at the one-time dose. All right. Also with the metrodinazole, all right, you have a metallic taste. 
Okay, these are the side effects of this, of this medication. So those of you guys who have to give um, this medication to the patients, you want to make sure that you're explaining the side effects so that way they're not thinking that something is wrong with them, but really and truly it's the medication that's causing. So um, metallic taste, nausea and vomiting, they may have a hot flush feeling that they may get, okay, that occurs when taken with alcohol. So just with any medication, you always want to stay away from alcohol. You never want to take the medication with alcohol, okay? And that goes for narcotics, that goes for any, 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 any medication, even with the hypoglycemic medication because it increases in or heightens the effect of the medication. And you, it's, it's, it can be very harmful at times. So just so that way you can just kind of go over all of your teaching with medication administration, do not ever, take medications with alcohol. Most of the time, it's just only going to cause a, a bad effect, okay? And you do not want that. So no, no, no alcohol, okay? Also, it's contraindicated in patients who have blood dyscarsia, right? Central nervous system disease, if they're in their first trimester, right? Or women who are breastfeeding. So these medications these people who have these conditions, this medication is going to be contraindicated for them, okay? And with the tenodidazole, it is not safe in pregnancy. So I put that in red, just in case you to get any questions about it. You know, it is not safe in pregnancy. And last but not least, we have our nurse interventions for trichomonas. All right, so you want to be relieving discomfort, which you can do a sits baths, or you can give pain medication, or so some type some type of medication that's going to help relieve um, the, the the discomfort. Okay. Also, you want to make sure that you are increasing anxiety, whether it's informing the patient about um, the process and what's going on, about the infection that it, that you know can be treated with antibiotics. Sometimes just hearing that alone can help them, or ways of how they can prevent it from happening again. Okay, that can also help with their anxiety. Okay. Also, preventing reinfection and the spread of the infection, okay? So again, remember, it's, it's um, tr transmitted sexually, so you want to make sure that they have the proper education of how to prevent, you know, want to make sure that they're having safe sex, that they get tested, that there's many different things that come that comes in, into par when it comes to preventing trichomonas, okay? You also want to let them know about the vaginal area should be kept clean daily, all right? And not to wear any tight clothing down there. All right, so again, you, bacteria like to be in a nice warm place, okay, and um, they like to be in dark places. And remember, when, it, when you're wearing things that are tight, it causes for moist and, and sweating in, in that area, right? And that can cause um, infection and growth of infection to happen in that area, okay? So loose clothing are better just because breeze, are able, breeze and the, you know, coolness is able to flow through and out, all right? Also, you have your topical corticosteroids may be um, used because it helps to um, decrease irritation, all right? You also want to recline um, the patient for 30 minutes or so as they're inserting the medication, if it is a vaginal medication, because you don't want to waste any of the medication. So you want to at least keep them elevated, all right, for 30 minutes or so, so that way all the medication is able to get inside and that, you know, there is no wasting, all right? Also, you want to, the use of talcum powder should be avoided. I put that in red because it should be avoided, all right? And it likes to ask a lot of questions about powder or the talcum powder. You do not use it at all. Not for anything, not at all, all right? And you also want to avoid douching. And I put that also in red. Avoid douching. Why? And I know we hear about it all the time that, you know, before women used to douche, you know, and they used to clean their vaginal areas and clean on the inside or so. It comes in a clear bottle. They still even have it in stores, I believe. And uh, a lot of times women think that, oh, if I, if I get that, I'll clean out whatever is there and I'm good. Well, when you do that, you are getting rid of your normal flora. And normal flora is pretty much is your good bacteria that's inside of your body that helps to fight off infections. So if you're douching, you're getting rid of that, those bacteria that helps to fight these infections, which makes you more prone to having other infections, other harmful infections, okay? So avoid douching. Regular soap and water and washing in that area will suffice. You don't need to douche, all right? Also, you want to instruct uh, vulvar self-examination. You so as a female, you should always want to be, you know, self-examining yourself. See if there's any changes. Look and see if there's any swelling. Is there any redness? Right? Is there is there bumps or lumps or warts or anything that's that that should not be there? Is it there? 
and that just practices good health um, practices. So, you know, you should always want to be checking, you know, different parts of your body and examining them, looking to see if they're the same, if they're different, and if they are different, how so and in what way, and is it harmful or is it just a natural way of life, right? So there are going to be things about us that are not going to be the same as always. One could be our hair, right? From whatever color it was, now it's gray, right? But those are normal findings. So you want to look at the abnormal findings. So just keep it as good practice to make sure that you're watching how for these things, okay? So again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like it, please share it. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. If you have a comment, please leave it down in the comment section below. And don't forget to check out the description box where I have extra information that may not always be listed on the video. So again, thank you for coming on this journey.